Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. Well, I just read this great article, guys, on the Daily Mail website. It's crazy how many articles are coming out lately that are so anti-vegan and full of misinformation. This is another great one for you. Anyway, this article mentions how I'm um, on, like, say, Instagram and other social media outlets. You know, there's all these, you know, pretty attractive women. Uh, many vegans, some are just doing healthy eating. Anyway, they have lots of followers, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers. And many of their followers are young girls, young women who are being influenced to follow the paths of their heroes. And this article warns, though, that some girls will just take it too far and, and adopt this really extreme diet of veganism and develop develop eating disorders. And like just about all the other articles I've seen trashing veganism lately in the mainstream news, this article is no different. They talked to more than one anti-vegan, pro-meat, very biased nutritionist. Here, Judy Moore of London saying, yeah, it is kind of possible for a girl to meet all her nutritional needs having a balanced diet as a vegan if they're super duper careful about giving their bodies what they need. For instance, she says, meat is such a rich source of iron and once you give up all meat and eggs and fish, you're at extreme risk of being deficient in iron. Well, what this biased nutritionist didn't mention is that the number one source of iron is not in meat, fish, or eggs. It's in pepitas, pumpkin, and squash seeds, which I highly recommend. I like to eat the little bit almost every day. What she also doesn't mention is seven of the top 10 sources of iron are plant foods. And what she also doesn't mention is that there's no difference in the rates of anemia between meat eaters and non-meat eaters. And of course, the Daily Mail brings up what I'm now calling the hit parade, which are the nutrients that you see all these anti-vegan articles claiming that we're just not getting because of our restrictive diets. For instance, omega-3 fatty acids. Well, Mike the Vegan made an excellent video in response to Joe Rogan's stupid video. So looking at all the evidence, there doesn't really seem to be a compelling argument that vegan health is negatively affected by not having a dietary intake of DHA, which begs the question, could it be that vegan DHA levels are just how much a person's body needs? And because um, we're not eating meat, we're not supposedly getting vitamins like B12 and zinc. And I've talked about this countless times. I'll put some links to prior videos. I'm not going to bore you with that again. And because we're not having any dairy, this article says we're not getting calcium and therefore we're not developing strong bones. Indeed, if you have a look at current worldwide milk consumption, Great Britain and the United States both are high consumers of milk. So we should have really strong bones, right? Well, what this article doesn't mention is if you take a look at studies that measure hip fractures and compare that to how much animal protein, how much calcium they're getting from milk, you'd see that the countries that consume the most calcium strangely have the highest rates of hip fractures. Hmm. Don't misunderstand me, calcium is extremely important and it's really easy to get as a vegan. Seven out of the 10 top leading sources of calcium, again, are from plant foods, with the number one source coming from dark leafy greens. And it gets worse. The second nutritionist they talk to is even more anti-vegan. Stephanie Moore says veganism is not only a fad, it's a huge and growing problem for girls. What's really strange is that this nutritionist claims she was vegan in her past for seven years, yet she says she was ill all the time and was lacking energy, which is completely opposite of what you hear most vegans saying, how they feel. They feel like they have more energy because they're getting carbohydrates finally and eating enough calories and they're not getting ill that often. I can speak, that's my personal experience as well, which makes me wonder, what in the world was this nutritionist eating that made her fail so miserably? I bet you she wasn't eating a proper, healthy vegan diet. Now, this anti-vegan nutritionist is really starting to say some crazy stuff. She's comparing veganism to like anorexia and other eating disorders because we eat this very restrictive diet, which is all about focusing on what we cannot eat rather than what we can. I think she's got this completely backwards. I mean, there's just three things vegans don't eat, just three little things. We don't eat dead animals, we don't eat their eggs, and we don't eat secretions from their mammary glands. Just three little things. Once you give up those three things, you start discovering more and more fruits you aren't eating and vegetables and nuts and seeds, even processed vegan products. It's a world of abundance out there. What in the hell is she talking about? She finishes off by saying that 
people like me who are promoting vegan diet to teenagers are being completely irresponsible because she sees perfectly healthy girls go into veganism and come out unhealthy. Well, this is complete crap. Even, I hate bringing this up every video like this, but even the American Dietetics Association has said, not only vegetarian, but vegan diets, appropriately planned ones, are appropriate for all people in all stages of their lives. That includes teenage girls. Yeah, so the Daily Mail thinks this rise in veganism over the past decade is just a result of it being a trend started by popular Instagrammers and the like. Well, that might be true. Yeah, they help spread the word, get the message out there. But I think there's a deeper reason why so many young people are attracted to veganism. I see this all the time. People my age, like the two anti-vegan nutritionists here, don't give a crap. But young people care. Why? Because they'd like to have a healthy planet when they grow up. Just this week, an article came out showing how we may have hit a tipping point. We've gone past a tipping point of being able to control the carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. If that's true, we are screwed. But let's try to address the cause here. The number one source of greenhouse gases, it's not from transportation, it's from animal agriculture. So I think that's why so many young people are attracted to veganism. It's not only healthy, it's not only good for the animals, it's also the best way to have a healthy future for our planet. So post your questions and comments down below. Why do you think so many young people are going vegan lately? And why do you think there's so many of these anti-vegan articles coming out saying the same exact stuff, the same misinformation over and over again? What is up? Is the meat industry doing something here? Let me know what you think down below. Share this video with a friend and hit like if you got something out of it. And um, subscribe for more vegan information and entertainment from Angie and myself here at Happy Healthy Vegan. So until next time, don't listen to these dumb anti-vegan nutritionists. Keep it carved, baby. Keep it carved. Lack of saturated fat and cholesterol, dietary cholesterol and saturated fat leads to hormonal imbalances, leads to your body having a, 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 a harder time producing sex hormones,